Hi everyone. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time and I'm still going to struggle with it because it is so hard to put this into words. One thing I'm going to try to do is kind of tell you how I did it and I'll also try to give you some of the details on why I think that worked. Now this might not be the thing for everyone but it certainly worked for me. So. If you don't really know what you want to do for a career, you might not be quite here yet, but feel free to listen. So for the person that kind of does know what they want to do, you know, say you're me, say you want to do something, you know, technical, you know, you're good with computers, or at least you think you are, you don't know how you really measure up and you just want to do it, but you want to get through and be successful. So I was absolutely able to make that happen, but there's kind of a weird trick I used mentally to make that happen. So the first thing is choosing to be an optimist about this one thing. Now, I am not what you would consider to be an optimist. Uh, most of my life up until this point, I would have been considered quite the pessimist, maybe even a nihilist. And today, I am still mostly like that. So I'm not trying to tell you you have to change your personality completely, but for this one thing, it will help you a lot if you choose to be an optimist and I will go over that a little bit more. But I want to talk about role models. So I think the way that we think about role models right now, kind of the way it's portrayed in society is not actually a great path for most people. Now I have some excellent role models in my life, the best being my father. Now, my father's an electrical engineer, I'm a software developer, so that's quite different. My point is, I guess, you can have a role model that does something different than you do and still take good lessons from that. So let's go a little bit more into that. If your parent does exactly what you want to do and they are a lot like you, then I don't know if you need this video, but beyond that, most of the time we're not quite like our parents and we have another kind of disadvantage when it comes to using that person as a role model. That being that that person is our parent. So the truth is the way they present themselves to you as their child is probably really not the way they are in real life. So if you have someone, you know, a parent who is your role model, that's great but realize that it might give you a little bit of a roadblock and that they appear very professional and in control and stern or however they are. It's probably not how you are when you're that, you know, when you're the age of being their kid, basically. At this moment, you're probably quite a bit more laid back as a person. You probably um, have not been working your whole life. And so there are obstacles there. And, and that is, I, I've seen this with people who try to like study someone as a role model in a career uh, path and it almost can dissuade you from doing it because you see their demeanor and you can't imagine making yourself that way. And I mean, if you've ever done something like this where you go to a workplace and you see people and they're usually like 30, maybe even 40 years older than you. So you might get this idea that to be like them, you have to act like them. And that's part of the, uh, of what I'm trying to do with this channel is, is kind of show you, you don't have to be a super, you know, uh, collared shirt, very professional person in order to get into a career field. In fact, it's quite the opposite that a lot of these people that you are looking at as role models or, you know, where you want to be are probably a lot more laid back than you know, and you're just not seeing it because you're there. And that might sound, sound kind of weird, but you know, they are trying to model for you. And that might take away a little bit from, you know, what you would actually see uh, that could make you feel a little more like you, you could belong. And uh, let me go into why I say that. So one thing I looked at, and again, this was, you know, not my main role model, but it is something I was watching. It was a TV show at the time. And this was right before I went to university doing my IT degree. And it's a show called Silicon Valley. 
So this show is about a bunch of software developers, which is what I wanted to do. And they were incredibly unprofessional. So even the most lax that someone at an older age is going to be that you might be looking up to, it's probably not as lax as you are when you're relaxed. Now, when I watched this show, knowing that yes, it's fiction, um, at the same time, seeing people doing what I wanted to do that were probably less professional than I was at the time, actually probably about the same. But I took that and I was able to factor that into, you know, what I wanted to be. I, I would still, you know, look at my dad and appreciate and use ideas from, from who he was and what he did. But when it came to thinking of the more immediate future, I would kind of, you know, look at this, that these are a bunch of software developers uh, living in a house together as roommates, trying to make something big. So why is this more realistic? Well, if your role model is someone that is in a different age group than you, they're in a very different situation than you. And it might be hard to follow them and be them if you don't have what they have. And that's something we're actually going to hit on a few times in this video. So why is that important? Well, you don't wanna lose connection with who you want to be. And I watched a lot of TV shows like this. You know, one show I watched when I was a bit younger was House MD. So I took things out of that show. You know, Gregory House, there were parts of him that at first when I was young and I, I watched that, I wanted to be exactly like him. I even considered going into a medical career because of this show. Now, I'm glad I didn't because I, I don't, well, you know, you never know what would have happened, but I don't think that that was really, you know, what I was good at. But I do almost um, implore you, you watch TV, right? Try to choose some good shows that are depicting people doing actual things we do uh, in society. Uh, like in the example of House, he's, he's a doctor in Silicon Valley. They're software developers. So the good thing about this is, if, you know, if you're watching Game of Thrones, you probably aren't really going to be able to relate to some of these characters or use them as any kind of model for what you want to do in the future. And with me watching Silicon Valley, a lot of those people would not be what you would consider great role models. And I remember with House, my parents even saying, you know, it's a great show, but he's not a very good role model. So you don't really want to look at this as like a planning thing. Oh, well, this looks like kind of a good thing for the career I want to be in, right? You wanna watch shows, you know, that are more centered in, in real careers, although they may not be um, very accurate, that doesn't really matter. Just find what you like and pretty much any professional career there are things that uh, are held in common. Now, I was lucky, right? This one was pretty close to the career I wanted. And um, I'm like, well, I feel like I could be one of these guys, right? You know, they talk like I do. They, they have crude senses of humor like I do, and yet they're, they're working. So how can I kind of channel that? And here's the answer to that question. You kind of form a mixture of the things you see that you like in, in professionalism, you know, but it doesn't matter if it's the same field you're in, I guess that's what I'm saying. It, find things you like about what they do on the job and things that you like about who they are. Kind of mold a, a version of yourself that fits in. And that's what I sort of did. I didn't want to be Richard Hammond from Silicon Valley. I wanted to be a character that would fit in in, in that show. And once I kind of got an idea of that just from watching it week after week, um, I just decided that is who I am. And that might sound kind of weird. And obviously there are situations where this could go awry. I'm not telling you to take this over the line. I'm not telling you to watch um, House and then put on a, a doctor's uh, coat and walk in and start trying to treat people that would be illegal. You have to be realistic and stay grounded in reality. So 
what my main point is here, and I don't want to do the same thing I did the procrastination video, but just be that person. Don't think about what do I need to do to be that person. You are that person. That's who you want to be, right? You want to be like that. You want to be this kind of thing that you have in your head. So you are that today. You are that. You are that vision of who you want to be when you watch these TV shows or watch other people. And that includes what you think you would do differently. That you are that person you've been picturing today. You are. Now, there are some obstacles that come with that, right? And one of those um, is what I was saying before, that you, you know, if we're talking about house, for instance, you do not have a doctorate, right? Um, if, if it comes to uh, like Silicon Valley, I do not live in California and I do not have a computer science degree or any related degree. Now, that's where you have to do something a little abstract and picture, well, what did that character do or what is the character who I am that is sort of a composite of all that? What did they do to, to get to that point? So you have to imagine for House, at some point he was a college student and uh, he probably did pre-med. Uh, in Silicon Valley, they probably went through a computer science degree or something related. And the specifics aren't really that important. It, it's more that you just have to realize that you're, you're not in that position yet. That doesn't mean that you can't be that person yet. So this is the hardest part of it, is you kind of just have to say, not this is what I want to be. This is who I am starting today. Now, there are going to be more challenges that arise with that. The, the character that I wanted to be is very good at programming. And I didn't really know much about programming. So that's where optimism comes into play. You know, you know that you're, you're that character. And so you also know that you are going to have a great time with learning to program and it's a prerequisite. Um, trying to be that person in front of other people is not a bad thing. In fact, I recommend it. Now, the hard part is, well, what if someone asks you a question that that person that you are you know, being would know the answer to and you don't? Well, this is a great opportunity for you, actually. It depends on how, how much you do know in some cases, answer it to the best of your ability, um, but always be willing to admit what you don't know and um, walk away from it. If you've been successful, you will be very motivated instantly to want to be able to answer that question the way the person you are will be able to answer it. And so if you're like me, you know, somebody asks you about Linux and you give them the best explanation that you can, you know, no, you know, telling them, being responsible and telling them what you don't know or not trying to make things up. But from there, you are gonna go and look it up. So that the next time that question comes up, you will have the answer. And maybe even go further than that. Think of more times that this, what other other questions that may come up that, this person that I, I am uh, knows the answer to. And then all of a sudden, you're a lot more that person because you now know that answer. So that will sort of motivate you, especially if you um, do you know, converse with other people on these subjects, to be that person um, that you now are, right? And I do really mean that. Don't continually look at it as this is the person I want to be this is who you are. Now, you might not be perfect. You might not be the um, absolute vision that you had originally, but keep in mind that every TV show, um, the character has times where they have to uh, doubt themselves, right? Something happens that they thought they were prepared for and they weren't. And that is sort of the key here is you're doing that for yourself. and. The point is that, at least at this point, you're not doubting your inspiration, you're doubting yourself. 
which doesn't sound like a good thing, but you're going to have to get used to it in life. It, I don't know anyone, no matter how far in they are, who doesn't doubt themselves at some point. But the more you keep doing this, the more you actually will resemble that character. And try to segment it too. Like I said, you're going to have to be maybe the college student before um, you are that actual person as far as what you have. And be willing to picture that and be optimistic about it. Because, you know, you can take this in segments. And the, this character, you don't have to try to be the 40-year-old doctor right out of the gate. And, and you want to try to keep that in mind as part of who you are. But if you're just starting in college, make the college student part of your persona. Like, what would the ideal college student version of that be? And when you're in college, it will kind of come naturally. You will kind of mold into that, that your surroundings tell you you're the college student. You are the character you've thought up. Again, not specifically the character of the TV show, but a character that could fit in with that character. And you're in the setting, you're in college. So make that happen and believe that's who you are because it actually is. And there's a big difference between doubting your aspirations and your abilities and doubting yourself. Doubting yourself is something that we make sound really bad, but it's actually really not because at least you have that to doubt. Okay, guys, I hope you like this video. I hope it made some kind of sense. My main point is to just go ahead and be who you want to be. Just go ahead and start doing it. You are that person. And it's going to have hurdles. I'm not saying you're not going to have uh, setbacks, but it can work for you because it worked uh, for me. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. If you like this channel, please subscribe. Have a good night.